So I'll turn over to 140 this morning down at the cross, 140. where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied, glory to His name, glory to His name, glory to His name, there to my heart was the blood applied, glory to His name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood of fountain that saves from sin. I am so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Amen. So, Lord, welcome you this morning as we uh, begin our service. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to gather here today uh, in this house to worship you. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy and your salvation and for your presence here in our midst. Lord, we just uh, pray now that uh, you'll be with us and encourage us as we seek to honor you in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Brother Dave. Turn over to 142 now. There is a fountain. 142 will do all four verses. a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains lose all their guilty stains lose all their guilty stains and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all stains. The dying thief rejoiced to see that fountain in his day. And there may I, though vile as he, wash all my sins away. Wash all my sins away. Wash all my sins away. And there Wash all my sins away. Dear dying lamb, the precious blood shall never lose its power. Till all the ransomed church of God be saved, no sin no more. Be saved to sin no more. Be saved to sin no more. 
awesome church of God, be safe to sin no more. Ere since by faith I saw the stream, thy flowing wounds apply. Redeeming love has been my theme, and shall be till I die, and shall And shall be till I die. Amen. Amen. It is a joy to welcome you, as I said earlier. And if you're visiting with us, we're delighted that you're here. I want you to feel at home as we worship the Lord uh, together. And uh, uh, it's good to be in the Lord's house. Uh, and uh, we uh, appreciate the flowers today. Uh, in uh, honor of Clement and Reba Doris's 72nd wedding anniversary. So, can you spell that, Reba Doris? Can you spell that? Yeah. I was going to ask Clement, but he can't hear me. Okay, all right, uh, and uh, they're, to celebrate, uh, they're inviting everyone uh, to come downstairs uh, and to uh, help them, uh, there will be a catered luncheon uh, for everyone uh, to come and to participate right after the service, so I encourage everyone uh, to stay and to celebrate this uh, very special event. Uh, this past uh, Thursday, we had the privilege, uh, me and Miss Kathy, uh, Braswell uh, went to uh, Liffey Springs uh, Elementary School uh, and uh, fed the teachers breakfast and, uh, and the staff and uh, had a great time there uh, just let, thanking them for what they do and they were very appreciative uh, of, uh, of what we did. And uh, Tuesday, uh, we're going to be able to go to uh, Annette Wind Elementary School. So I appreciate uh, your generosity uh, and uh, we are doing our best to try to... Uh, uh, make an impact uh, and encourage uh, these uh, teachers. Y'all be praying for them. And uh, while I'm doing that, uh, we want to recognize, uh, we've got a couple of uh, teachers and uh, school workers that uh, we want to recognize. Two of them aren't here, uh, but we've got a little bag for, for all four of them. Uh, Miss uh, Sherry, uh, Allie, she's not here. And Miss Felicia, she teaches at uh, in Paulding County. What grade does she teach, Mose? Kindergarten? All right. And then uh, uh, Miss Megan. Megan, you come on down. Miss Megan teaches teachers. That's scary, ain't it? And, uh, uh, but uh, we appreciate her. And Miss Renee, she's at, uh, Megan's at Winston Elementary School. And uh, Renee is at uh, Douglas County High School. She's the school nurse and a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, so we've got something for them. Appreciate the Bell Ellis class uh, sponsoring that. Uh, nominating committee, uh, we need to meet for just a moment right after church. Uh, shared blessings is going to be a week from Thursday. Need you to sign up if you're planning to come. Uh, Dr. Gerald Harris is going to be speaking. Uh, he's going to be talking about getting ready for revival. Uh, encourage you, if you're planning to come, to bring some Kit Kat bars. Do we're going to surprise Dr. Harris with uh, some Kit Kat bars. He loves those, so uh, uh, if you can remember that. But, but we need you to sign up. Uh, be much in prayer for our revival. Uh, encourage you to uh, be praying. Uh, if you uh, didn't get one of these uh, last week, uh, these little prayer commitment card, encourage you to pick one up uh, and be praying for our revival and the things that it says there, but especially be praying for the laws and pray that uh, we'll see some souls saved. Also, uh, a week from Wednesday, we're going to kick off our Wednesday night program. Uh, and we're going to have uh, some activities. We're going to start early at 6 o'clock. Uh, we're going to have some pizza. Uh, we're going to have some games for the children. But we especially are looking to get our youth and children to come 
Uh, so if you know of any youth or children, encourage them to come and to be here uh, as we have fun, and then we'll worship as well. Uh, there's going to be a, a baby shower for Megan and Jason. Uh, and you see the information there. There's more information uh, posted on some posters in the foyer. Uh, or you can uh, see Sherry, Reba, Bonnie, or Karen if you have questions. Uh, uh, somebody asked me if we had a baby. If you had a baby already, Megan, we do not have a baby. Uh, but they are adopting. Uh, and it'll be sometime around the 1st of September. We do not know the sex of the baby. Uh, but uh, we appreciate your prayers uh, as we prepare uh, for that big day. Uh, we have several to, oh, and uh, on the back, please note that uh, Roberta, got Roberta's uh, new address there, Green Park Senior Care Home, uh, so uh, make a note of that. We have several to remember for prayer. I want to remember all of these on our prayer list. I uh, want to remember the families of uh, Billy Rogers and uh, uh, Jim Davis with their passing and funerals this week. Uh, and then uh, uh, also uh, Brian King. Did Brian have surgery f this Friday or is it coming up? This coming Friday. Brian's going to get a lot dumber. He's going to get his wisdom teeth out. What are you going to do if you, if you don't know nothing? Huh? That's scary, but be praying for him. That's this Friday. Anything else we need to mention? All right, any unspoken concerns? Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for today. We thank you for your goodness and mercy, for all that you do for us. We thank you especially for the privilege to be here and to be in this place. Lord, we just pray for all of these on our prayer list. Lord, Pray for these we've mentioned. We pray for our nation, Lord, and with this COVID uh, <clears throat> pandemic, we pray, Lord, that uh, uh, as the numbers have risen some, we pray that that starts going back down again, and uh, that uh, this uh, stays under control. Just keep, uh, keep us safe from this. And Lord, we just uh, pray for all these unspoken concerns. And just, uh, we pray for our revival, Lord, that's coming up in just a few weeks. We pray for these men that will be preaching we pray that uh, you'll just use this time to encourage and challenge us and to bless us. Lord, just be with us now as we continue uh, in this service. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Brother David. So I'll turn now over to 184. Jesus is all the world to me. 184. <clears throat> Jesus is all the world to me, my life, my joy, my all. He is my strength from day to day. Without him I would fall. When I am sad to him I go, no other one can cheer. So when I am sad, he makes me glad, he's my friend. Jesus is all the world to me, my friend in trial soul. I go to him for blessings and he gives them all. sends the sunshine and the rain. He sends a harvest golden grain. Sunshine and rain, harvest of grain. He's my friend. Jesus is all the world to me, and true to him I'll be. Oh, how could I this friend deny when he's so true to me? Following him, I know I'm right. He watches.
watches o'er me day and night, following him by day and night. He's my friend. Jesus is all the world to me. I want no better friend. I trust him now. I'll trust him when life's fleeting day shall end. Beautiful life with such a friend. Beautiful life that has no end. Eternal life, eternal joy. He's my friend. do special for y'all this morning that uh, to me kind of sums up everything that we just need to depend on him come unto me this morning Blessed Savior, calling the oppressed, O ye heavy laden, come to me and rest. Come no longer tarry, I your load will bear. Bring me every burden, bring me every care. Come unto me, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Hear me and be blessed. I am meek and lowly. Come and trust my mind. Come, my yoke is easy and my burdens lie. Are you disappointed, wandering here and there? Dragging chains of doubt and loaded down with care. Do unholy feelings struggle in your breast. Bring your case to Jesus, he will give you rest. Come unto me, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Blessed, I am meek and lowly. Come and trust my mind. Come, my yoke is easy and my burdens lie. Stumbling on the mountains, dark with sin and shame, stumbling toward the pit of hills, consuming flame. By the power of sin, deluded and oppressed, bear the tender shepherd, come to me and rest. Come unto me, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, hear me and be blessed. I am meek and low. Come and trust my mind. Come, my yoke is easy and my burdens lie. Have you by temptation often conquered men? Has a sense of weakness brought distress within? Christ will sanctify you if you'll claim his best. In the Holy Spirit, he will give you rest. Come unto me, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, hear me and be blessed. I am meek and lowly, come and trust my mind. 
come, my yoke is easy, and my burdens lie. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother David. This morning, if you will, turn in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 2 for our scripture passage. We pick back up in Genesis. Genesis chapter 2. We're going to begin reading with verse 4. And I better get my glasses out. If you found it and if you are able, if you would please stand as we honor the reading of God's Word. And the Word of God says, These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth And there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden from thence, uh, to water the garden from thence it was parted and, and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pisan, that which compasseth the whole land of Havilah, uh, where there is gold. And the gold in that land is good. There's Bedlam and, and Onkstone. And the name of the second river is Gihon, uh, and the same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river is Hedelko, uh, which is that which goeth toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word, for the privilege to be here. God, we also are very humbled by the truth that you are the creator of this world. God, help us to understand who we are and why we're here. And Lord, we just uh, pray that you'll give us wisdom and guidance. And Lord, if there's one here who does not know you today, we pray that they might trust you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We worked our way up to the fourth verse here of chapter 2. Uh, some, uh, some have tried to make uh, uh, verse 4 uh, through 25 a uh, second account or another version of creation. Uh, but what we need to understand is that that's not what's going on here. Uh, this is just looking at it from a different perspective of the creation account. Uh, <clears throat> In chapter 1, uh, we have kind of a sequential order of creation. Day 1, this is what happened. Day 2, day 3, day 4, all the way through day 7. But now, uh, God is trying to paint a picture. Uh, have you ever, uh, you ever had an experience of where uh, you had three or four people uh, see the same event happen uh, but when you listened to them talk, you wondered if they were at the same event. Anybody ever seen that? You know? Uh, because of, of the perspective. I kind of imagine it's kind of, it would be uh, kind of like uh, 
Uh, I, I like uh, old Western movies, and I love uh, some of the old the paintings of, of out west. And, and it would be uh, kind of like an artist uh, painting the same scene, but three different ways. He could, he could paint the scene uh, of, of, of uh, the Old West emphasizing the sunset going down. And everything else, it's there, but, but it's, it's not emphasized. When you look at the picture, you're just like, wow, that is an amazing sunset. Or he could take that same scene, and instead of focusing on the sunset... He could still have the sun setting, but he could instead focus on the majestic mountain range in the background. And he can make that prominent. And when you see the picture, you're like, wow, look at how beautiful that is. Or he could uh, take that same scene, and instead of emphasizing the, the sun going down, and instead of emphasizing the mountains, he could instead emphasize the cowboys out there with the cows hurting them. Same picture, same scene, but, but different things are emphasized. And this chapter is very important because in the chapters to come, it gives us some very important, significant information. Uh, we're told here, verse 5, something, uh, and, and I, don't, I don't fully understand this, uh, but when God created the world, in the beginning, verse 5 tells us uh, that, uh, that the plants and, and trees and everything that God had, had put on this earth, that at the, at the beginning were not fully developed. Now, now there's a, a reason why he's saying that. All of the ingredients were there. Uh, but there, he, he says there's something missing. Uh, look, look at what verse 5 says. Uh, it, it says that uh, uh, in every plant of the field before it was in the earth, in every herb of the field before it grew, it was there, but it wasn't really growing. Why? For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. Now, uh, we find here that uh, this, is, this is important to know. Uh, before the flood, remember, uh, remember when God came to Noah and said, uh, Noah, you need to build a boat because it's going to rain. Now, we might not think that so odd, but guess what? Noah had never seen it rain. Before the flood, uh, the hydraulic system uh, of, of, the, uh, of the earth was different. And, and instead of moisture being evaporated uh, from the seas and the rivers and going to the sky and then coming down uh, as precipitation, instead, Scripture tells us that uh, the moisture was fed to the earth from underneath and it came up from the ground. So, so that's one reason why things uh, weren't really growing. But, but notice what else it says here. And this is very important. The last part of verse 5. There was not a man to till the ground. Do you see that? Do you see that? There was not a man to till the ground. Now one of the things that, that I hope you get today, uh, that, that I believe that this passage is trying to teach us, is how... God's plan was to make this earth a place for man to live and, and God designed this earth for man to work. And if, if God's will is going to be done, there has to not only be the earth, but man also has to live in it. Now why do I say that? We live in a time where many think that the problem in this old world is man. And some would even go to the extreme that uh, uh, if we really want to solve uh, the, the problems of the earth, we just need to get rid of man. Folks, that's not what God created. Amen? 
God made this earth, but, but even when He made the earth, verse 5 is emphasizing uh, in the beginning, before man was made, there was still something missing. There wasn't a man to come and to cultivate and to work the ground. And then uh, verse 7 uh, says, The Lord God formed man. Now, uh, when, we, when we looked at chapter 1, you remember I really tried to emphasize that God spoke and there was life. He spoke and there was life. Uh, he, he spoke and, and there were water. He spoke and, and the earth was formed. But here... Uh, <laughs> He, he emphasizes that when it came to man, he didn't just speak, he formed man. Uh, this, this, uh, the terminology that's used here refers to a craftsman, someone who is skilled in their work. Uh, you know... Uh, uh, Somebody can, can uh, you can get a piece of wood, and uh, uh, miss a nail, I bet if, if I gave you a piece of wood, you could make something out of it, couldn't you? Firewood. That's, that's a good, I like that. But, but somebody who is trained and has skill, And the proper tools, they can take Miss Nail's firewood and make a beautiful piece of furniture. Amen? And folks, I, I, I want you to see here that the wording here is very intentional. God formed us. Uh, notice, uh, to me, that says God gave us a lot of thought. God uh, uh, put a lot of work into us. He, he, he was very deliberate in the design. He didn't just throw us together. You, you know, uh, we, we sometimes uh, use the, the illustration uh, about trying to dis or say we don't believe in evolution by saying, uh, you know, if you put, if you took a Swiss watch apart and you put all of the, uh, the parts in a bucket and you swirled it around and, and then you, you dumped it out, would the Swiss watch be put back together? And the answer is what? No. So we can't expect uh, the earth to be formed by that. But folks, neither did God just throw a bunch of dirt in a bucket and swirl it around and flip it around and then dump it out and man appeared. God formed us deliberately. The psalmist says, I will praise you because I've been remarkably and wonderfully made. Have you ever thought about how complex we are as human beings? Uh, I learned how complex we are when... Uh, when I've gone to the doctor before, and I may be the only one here that that's ever happened to, but I've got something wrong. You ever been to the doctor when you, when you had something wrong? My, my grandmother was in her 80s, and she told me she had a blood pressure issue, and she said, well, she went to the doctor, and she said, well, I guess that's the first time I went to the doctor when I was sick. I thought, oh, okay. But you have something wrong and you go to the doctor. And, and what do you expect the doctor to do? Tell you what's wrong and provide a solution. Make it better. Amen? Yeah. But what do you do if the, you go to the doctor and they're like, I don't have a clue. Anybody ever been there? Amen? Folks, that just speaks to the design that God made us. Uh, the human body is a single structure. 
but it's made up of, of, a, of billions of smaller structures of four major kinds, cells, tissues, organs, and systems. There's, there's 11 different types of systems which work in the human body and enable it to function and operate from the circulatory system, the digestive system, the immune system, the nervous system, the muscular system, the endocrine system, uh, the, the intergumentary system, the renal system, the reproductive system, the res respiratory system, and the skeleton system. Folks, God designed all of these systems inside of every human body to work together. The body has about five quarts of blood. Did you know, I was a little bit surprised at this. Did you know it only takes 45 seconds for our blood to circulate all the way through the body? 45 seconds. And the average heartbeat of an adult a day is over 100,000 times a day. Now, folks, uh, None of us are perfect, and you know we uh, uh, we may all have something that uh, we wish was different uh, about ourselves. But folks, we need to understand that we need to we need to realize that God formed us specially just the way we are, and we need to celebrate that. Amen. We were made. We were formed. We were created by. Oh. But he goes on here, he says, he created, in verse 7, he created us out of the dust of the ground. Now, uh, do you know what dirt's made out of? Dirt is composed chiefly of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen with smaller quantities of nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. Do you know what 99% of the human body is made of? Oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, carbon, calcium, and phosphorus. Folks, we're made of dirt. Amen? We're, we're of this earth. God took the dirt that He created... And he used that to form us. And this is important because we need to understand we're not greater than the earth. We're part of it. We're part of it. But then notice it says here in verse 7 that uh, uh, God then after he made man out of the dust, he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Now, Life comes from God. There is no life apart from God. Uh, if there was no God, we would not have life. And all of the living creatures on this earth, God gave their life to them. But here, when it comes to man, man whom he's formed, man whom he's crafted, he's specifically designed the way that he is, it says... He breathed life in him. Uh, do you have, how do you feel about your personal space? That, uh, that distance is maybe a little different for everybody. Some people, especially with COVID, they may want to say not six foot, uh, don't get within 10 or 15 foot. Right? But even people we know, we're okay with people coming up close, but there's a point where we, we only allow certain people to get real close. Amen? And yet, the image projected here is, is that God got right in the face of Adam, right in his face, and blew into him the very life that we possess even today. And it points to his intimacy with us and his desire to have a relationship with, with this, thing, this being that he created. And because of that, dear friends, God instilled in us, he made us 
so that we would have this desire to have a relationship with God. Folks, if we're not right with God, we're not going to uh, be at peace with ourselves. If we're not right with God, if we don't know God, there's something missing in our life that only God can fill. And we'll never have that peace, that fulfillment, until we repent of our sins and we trust Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Not only did, man cre did God create man, but look at verse 8. He made man, and then it says he planted a garden eastward in Eden. He planted a garden. Uh, he, uh, he designed... Uh, a place specifically uh, for man to live in. And we call it the Garden of Eden. It was, a, it was, it was the most beautiful place you can imagine. Uh, it would have had all kinds of trees. And these trees and plants and shrubs and vegetables, everything, everything you can imagine, they were all fully grown when God planted them and when God created this. And, and, and it, would have, uh, it would have been a wonderful place to live. God made that just for Adam. Now some's going to ask, where was the Garden of Eden? Somebody might say, preacher, point it out to me on the map. I can't. But I, I want you to notice verses 10 through 14. He, he mentions four rivers. And, and the point of this is to emphasize that Eden, the Garden of Eden, was a real place. It was real. It's not figment of anybody's imagination. Uh, it's just not a literary device. But it was a real place. Well, then you might say, well, preacher, show me where it was. Well, I can't because when the flood came, the world was uh, uh, changed dramatically. Uh, nothing was the same. But, but he's saying here, it was here. But not only that, notice it tells us uh, that they had everything they could imagine to eat. Think about that for just a minute. God specifically made a paradise for Adam and Eve to live in. It had uh, everything to keep them comfortable. Uh, it had everything to, provide, to protect them uh, from, from the elements. It had every, everything to provide uh, for them to eat. And uh, when I say that it provided everything for them to eat, uh, it, it, they didn't just grow beans. I mean, you can live on beans. Amen? Some of y'all have. Anybody want to amen that? You can live on beans, but <coughs> beans get old after a while. Amen? I, I have a feeling that the fruits and the vegetables and the, the things that they could eat was just unimaginable. Then we find here a little more information that's important. It says here that uh, there were two trees in particular. There was the tree of life, and there was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Um, and folks, uh, we, we don't know anything about these two trees. We don't know what kind of fruit they produced. Uh, <clears throat> And it's futile for us to try to assume that we can figure this out. What do we know about them? The, the tree of life uh, is mentioned several times in Scripture. Uh, it, it emphasized the life and the vitality that was in the Garden of Eden. Uh, and uh, the reason why, if, if a person ate of this, if Adam ate of this, uh, it would enable him to live forever. The point is not what kind of fruit it was. The point is, is that, that that was the purpose that God gave to that tree. 
it, it emphasized the power and the presence of God. There was the tree of life. There was also the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now we have, this is mentioned uh, almost uh, not at all other than in this passage in Scripture. But the idea was that if you ate of this fruit, that you would gain a sense of both good and evil. All Adam and Eve would, had known before was good, the goodness of God, amen, the, the mercy of God, the abundant mercy of God. But if they ate of this fruit, they would experience death and evil. Now I want you to notice, uh, God, it says here in verse 15, look at that. And the Lord God took man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress and keep it. Uh, another way to say that is to cultivate, to work. Uh, this was uh, the missing component. Remember in verse 5 where it said, uh, you know, th there was not a man to work it. God created the world to be managed under the good stewardship of mankind. And for this world to thrive, man must be engaged and involved in that work. God gave, put man here to work. Uh, I, I could preach a couple of sermons with what I'm going to say here from here on out. Folks, uh, we need to understand something. There's a very basic principle here. God made humans. And folks, when I say man, I'm not talking about a male. I'm talking about men and women. Boys and girls. Folks, I believe this, this tells us God made us for the purpose of work. Amen? God did not make us so we can lay around all the time. That wouldn't be very good for anybody. Amen? Uh, when, are we, when are we our healthiest? When we're busy, when we're active, when we're doing things. Uh, it, it helps us physically, it helps us mentally, it helps us emotionally. And folks, we need to see that, that there's nothing wrong with work. And we live in a time where a lot of people won't, got their hands out and they want something for free. Folks, that's not a biblical concept. We're supposed to work. We're supposed to work. Uh, and not only that, but for us as a Christian, we need to be working, we need to be busy doing. What should a Christian be busy doing? What, David? Witnessing, sharing the gospel, doing the word. That's what God made us for. But then notice what else it says here. Not only did he place man to work in the garden, Look at what he says. Verse 16. Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. He's saying the garden's wide open. Any and everything there is yours to eat. Except. The tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. Now, a couple of things here. We have a tendency to focus on the prohibitions that God gives us without emphasizing how he has blessed us in the abundant things that he has given us permission to do. Think about this for just a minute. God has just said, out of everything in the garden, everything in the garden, you can eat all of it. All of it. Can you imagine uh, what, what kind of a list that would be? 
Bonnie, could you write down all that stuff that they could do? Can, can you just imagine the abundance of what God has provided for them? God says you can eat any of it. You can have all of it. You can eat as much as you want. Except one tree. One tree. And folks, as, as we seek to live our life, we oftentimes, we want to we harp and focus on what God says we shouldn't do. Like somehow God is controlling us and God is being oppressive to us. Folks, when God tells us not to do something, it's for our benefit. Amen? It's for our benefit. And, and instead of us griping and complaining about what God says we shouldn't do, we ought to be recognizing and enjoying all the things that He says we can do. You need to work. You need anything you want. You have permission to do anything except eat of the one why did God do that God did this to give man a choice on to see whether he really loved God and was willing to trust God and trust his provision and his uh, providing for him so abundantly uh, because God had done so much for him, was he willing to obey just that one commandment? Or was he going to be dissatisfied and distrust God and what he had done and what he had said and want something else? Folks, I don't know about you, but this really speaks to me. Speaks to, speaks to me, it speaks to our, to our church, it speaks to what we need to be doing as the church. It speaks to us individually. Uh, folks, we need to be busy. Amen? Uh, not only do we need to be busy, but we need to give thanks to God for all He's blessed us with. How... When was the last time you thanked God for His abundant goodness and mercy and you've listed all of the things that God has done and is doing for you right now? You know, it's easy for us to complain about things that are going wrong and problems that we have and obstacles in our life. But folks, we need to, we need to stop and, and realize just how good God is to us. All right, we're going to have a test. Okay? How many of y'all woke up this morning? Raise your hand. Some of you didn't. Some of you didn't wake up. Okay? <laughs> Folks, if you woke up this morning, you, you've been blessed by God. Amen? How many of you know who you are? How many know how to get back home? How many of you going to have something to eat today? Folks, uh, even with all the problems that we've got, we sure are blessed to live in this country. Amen? You know, I've often wondered with uh, everybody complaining about how horrible America is, why in the world is everybody trying to get here if it's so bad? If it's so bad. Folks, do, do, you, see, do you see what we find right here in the second chapter? We need to be busy. We need to be busy. And we need to count our blessings and, and we, need to, we need to focus on what God is doing. And the last thing we need to do is not focus on what, what we think God is trying to keep from us because folks, whatever it is that God tells us not to do, it's for our benefit. And it's a matter of do we really trust God?
Joshua, when he lived at home, I hadn't mentioned him in a week or two. He's still alive. He's still doing good. And son, if you're watching this, I just want you to know I still love you. That's why I'm talking about you. Joshua, when he was growing up, he thought I didn't know nothing. Nothing. He, he, he was like that for years. Now, he was respectful, but he, he just, he'd look at me like, Dad, you don't know what you're talking about. You know? Uh, especially, you know, I'd get him to help me doing carpentry work. And he's like, no, Dad, that ain't the way to do it. I'm like, son, you don't have a clue. And I, I used to argue with him, but then I quit and, and, and we do it his way and, and fail. Most of the time. Sometimes he had a good idea. Uh, but then afterwards, after we had to do it my way, he'd go, huh, wow, Dad, you do know something. You, wow. Folks, we don't need to be that way with God. Folks, God's told us everything we need right here in this book. And we need to accept it for how He's given it to us. And we need to believe that it's for our best interest. And we just need to trust Him. And we need to love Him because He's done so much for us. So the question is, are we willing to be busy doing His work? And are we willing to trust Him and His Word and obey Him? Now, as I close, you may be here today and you're, you know that you're lost. You know that you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Folks, you need to repent of your sins. You are under the wrath of God. And if you were to die right now, you would spend eternity in hell. There's not a thing you can do to save yourself. But if you'll repent of your sins and trust Jesus Christ to save you, he, He's made a way to, to restore us back to what He intended when He made us to begin with. He will save us. Amen? Isn't God good? For us as believers, let's get, be busy. Let's be busy working for the Lord. We've got a revival coming up. Let's be busy inviting people, praying, planning to be here ourselves. Let's be busy working. And let's focus on how God's blessed us instead of trying to find fault and complain or disobey Him in what He's told us to do. God's been so good to us. Let's trust Him. He does know best. Let's pray. Lord, we thank You for today, for Your love and mercy and goodness to us. Just the privilege to be here in this place. Lord, we just uh, pray if there's one uh, here this morning or one watching that, uh, Lord, if they're lost, that they would just repent and trust you even now. Lord, we thank you because you'll save them right then. Lord, help, uh, help us to realize how blessed we've been and grateful that you made us the way that we are. Um, help us to uh, find joy and comfort in all that you've done for us. And, and focus on that, not, not on the things that aren't the way we like them. But focus on what you have done for us, what you have given. Help us to obey you, help us to trust you, help us to love you and show it by our actions. In the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to stand and sing our hymn of invitation. What number, Brother David? 238. Encourage you to respond. The Lord's spoken to you. Uh, if you've never trusted Christ, you need to come and 
accept him at this time or if you need to come kneel at the altar, whatever the Lord's laid on your heart as we stand and sing. Oh